It's now my pleasure to welcome Dan McDowell. Dan grew up as one of 10 kids in Chicago, and he married his high school sweetheart and raised two kids in the suburbs of Kansas City and Iowa. Dan spent 25 years as a contract negotiator for major healthcare and publishing corporations across the U.S. He continued this work on Florida's Space Coast until 2012, when his wife of 30 years, Louise, was taken by cancer. Since her death, Dan became a small businessman and has thrown himself into improving the community around him for the people he loves. He went back to school to earn a master's degree in management and sustainability, which he was awarded in 2023. Currently, Dan is a city councilman for our West Melbourne and lives with his husband of eight years, Bill McKay. Dan McDowell, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Great. Well, welcome everybody and thank you. I um, appreciate the uh, being here today and during this uh, beautiful Memorial Day weekend and allowing me to say a few words to the uh, group on true patriotism. Before I begin, I will ask all of us to take a moment of silence in honor and mourning of the U.S. military personnel who died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Thank you. My presentation today will be multifaceted. First, I will uh, establish a foundation, and then I'll share with you a few of my personal and professional opinions. And then if time permits, we'll open it up for some discussion afterwards, or if we do not have the time, then I'll definitely be here after the service, or we can talk um, online or have coffee sometime after this. Um, I do have a disclaimer, and that is that I am not a scholar, and all of my remarks are just that, my personal comments based on my interactions with people, places, and things. My background in organizational development is both my professional career as, in the, as an executive business leader as well as, which I did for many years, as well as my recent activities in the civic uh, arena in West Melbourne as the city councilman. And then also organization development was a key piece of my uh, development in completing my graduate degree in management. This master's degree is similar to an academic uh, requirements of an MBA with the exception that the degree majors in sustainability, which is the three-pronged approach to equally balancing the economics, the environment, and our social responsibilities. Without going off topic too much, often I hear about nonprofits. That are they businesses, are they not businesses? And I would like to really challenge that thinking because the profit segment of our community, no apologies here, I was in it for 30 years, okay? They are not democracies. They are providing something that consumers need or want in exchange for personal gain. And as an employee, I was uh, trained that our loyalty is set with the stockholders, not the stakeholders, as compared to a nonprofit organization like, say, this one as an organization. They're, they're really not a business in the same sense of operations. They are a service organization, and they need to make a profit, no doubt about it, in order to stay as a service organization, and they have an obligation, not a loyalty, to their stakeholders, not their stockholders. And I just felt that was important to set that stage because um, in this world of uh, toxic politics, sometimes we get a little confused on profits and nonprofits and where they begin and end. So enough said on the business side for a moment. I want to talk about citizenship. Because true patriotism, I'm going to tie this together, as you'll see in just a moment. And so in its simplest form, as a person that was born in Chicago, I will um, say that I am a citizen. And my proof of me being a citizen is that document that says that I'm a, um, you know, um, I was born here. And so for that, I'm a citizen. I don't have to prove my patriotism to anyone. And as a matter of fact, patriotism, 
patriotism is not an automatic. It is a behavior that is developed based on our value system throughout a lifetime of experiences. So I looked up and I thought, wow, that's confusing. So let me uh, look at patriotism so I can get a better grasp on this. And so patriotism, if you can bear with me, is defined as a feeling, okay, of attachment and commitment to a country, a political community, or a nation. And it is basically a love for that country. Whereas nationalism, okay, because they get confused. Sometimes they get treated as the, a synonymous uh, word. And that that is really about loyalty to a nation, okay? And I'll get into this a little bit more in depth when we get into this, uh, as I get through this piece on the citizenship. But I do want to tell you that nationalism wasn't even brought into the subject until the 19th century, uh, 19th century. So patriotism was always the common word people were familiar with. I'll return to citizens because I do want to say that I feel I'm a good citizen, and I think everybody in this room is a good citizen, and, if, um, and, and I apologize for the folks that are working on their citizenship or they're here and they're still patriotic because you can do both, okay? <laughs> I ask myself then, okay, uh, where the citizen uh, question is... Um, What's the origin of it? And I did find that uh, you go, it goes back early as, you know, the Romans and the Greeks developed citizenships based on the, the um, a holistic approach or the, um, the larger, or what's the uh, term that's used? Greater, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that makes sense to me because that's typical from a business uh, acumen. I immediately think of, you know, one plus one is three, two heads are better than one, you know, those kinds of phrases that say when we do it together, we are much more effective, we're much more, uh, we can uh, do things much greater on a grander scale. So I said, okay, if I'm a citizen, how can I be a patriotic citizen? What does that mean? And how can I... Um, call to the question. So to build a de uh, democratic system, what does it take to be a patriotic citizen? And I would say these are the following things that you would be expected to do. You would be expected to have the ability to vote. You know, you'd have pay your taxes, right? Meeting with your elected officials, that would make sense. Staying informed. And most of all, helping the community. I think those are all um, pieces. Obviously, it's not the end of the items that can be considered patriotic, but they're patriotic items, and it's important to understand that. So how is being a patriotic citizen different than nationalism? Let me attempt to draw the distinctions between true patriotism and nationalism, okay? I'm going to reference someone that I am familiar with, that I grew up in Chicago with. His name is Sidney Harris. He wrote a nationally recognized syndicated column called Strictly Personal. You may have heard of it, you may not have, but uh, growing up in Chicago, and it was a time that newspapers were really kind of the source of information, and I grew up on uh, Sidney Harris and Strictly Personal. And he, before he died, had passed away in 2019, he, he had a quote, and here's the quote. The difference between patriotism and nationalism is the patriot is proud of his country for what it does. And the nationalist is proud of his country no matter what it does. So I'm going to repeat that again because that's worth repeating. The difference between patriotism and nationalism is the patriot is proud of his country for what it does. The nationalist is proud of his country no matter what it does. The bottom line is both of those uh, patriots and nationalism, nationalists uh, love their country. I would think so. However, we must not be ignorant or naive to our shortcomings as a democracy. As I have learned both in organizational development, in business, and in my political career, as well as academically, we must always 
keep ourselves in check. We must ask ourselves, as patriotic citizens, are we doing the right things? In this, in the, uh, is this in the best interest of our people we serve, or am I being self-serving? So I want to just touch on my, um, as a political candidate, which I will tell you I'm not going to get into any specific policy dialogue, uh, but, I, uh, but emphasize how I have drawn the conclusion over the last seven years that sometimes we're dealing with cultural ideology, not political policy or platforms. I think that's very important to understand that sometimes it has nothing to do with political party. We deal with more of the status quo, often out of fear of change, than challenging ourselves. As a councilman in the local level, I deal mostly with the day-to-day -day life duties, responsibility, task-oriented, you know, are the potholes fixed yet, you know, get me a red light here, it, congestions, etc. So I don't deal as much, but in my role that I'm in currently and going out in the field, I, I have this expanded role and I'm traveling throughout this hundred miles within this district that I'm running. There are numerous toxic pol political landscapes, or in some cases, landmines, as it feels like leaders are trying to be louder and not leaders. Lots of noise and distraction and less on actions and results. Great leaders are not necessarily louder. Well, maybe political leaders may be a little bit louder sometimes. Um, but as I mentioned in my request for a moment of silence, our servicemen and women died for our democracy and our First Amendment rights. That's so important to understand. That's, you know, that hits it on the head right there. We cannot always accept things as they are and just roll over. We can be patriotic citizens and still get along, but not necessarily go along. We can balance the needs of personal freedoms and protect our environment with the economic challenges and continue to experience the development of our cities and towns. We can do this. We can and should call out toxic politics that are differing from our views. However, it needs to be legal. For example, it is not okay to yell out in a crowded theater, fire or to intimidate or physically threaten others opposing our views. That is not okay. It is okay, however, to demonstrate and express different views. For example, what I did yesterday, standing in the rain, peacefully protesting on public property, a, a political party's gathering where a sitting governor who openly admits in her book that she shot her puppy that was untrainable. That was unacceptable to me. I have a, you know, I have a view on that. So I felt very important to stand up on my First Amendment rights to do that. The other examples are that I go throughout this 100 miles and I table a lot and I'm at all kinds of events, all different events, and the First Amendment right is there. It's, in, it's, it's proudly placed that I have the right to be there. So I think that it's important that we're not doing, you know, I, I don't think we need to be louder, but we don't need to be quiet. Um, so our fight, or here's another example, our fighting for renaming a street here in Melbourne, 32 years in the making, from an airport boulevard to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. That was amazing, 32 years. That took a lot of effort and energy, and those were patriotic citizens. Our street theater that we did in, uh, in front of a high school showing books that were being burnt just to illustrate how we were fighting against book banning. We had the right to do that. We can be patriotic citizens and burn and, and show that this is not okay or assembling rallies that fight Don't Say Gay. 
that bad legislation. We can do that. It's okay. Or march on a bridge twice a week like I do. And I'll continue doing until November. So finally, I'm asking for everyone to please join me. Please join me in being a patriotic citizen and love our country. Thank you.